the stevedore knot. Hello everybody, welcome back and today's little knot is the stevedore knot which is a stopper knot and the idea of this particular stopper knot was that when a stevedore, now a stevedore is also known as a longshoreman, a docky, a docker or dock worker and basically someone who worked on the old vessels and would use rope to take cargoes from within the hold of a vessel. And the idea of the stopper knot on the end here, known as the stevedore knot, is so that when they actually use block and tacky tackles, pulleys, etc., the knot itself didn't go through and come out of the actual block and tackle. It just stopped fast. So it saved your rope disappearing down into the hold of the ship. Now the actual name of the knot is the stevedore knot and there's two schools of thought as to where this particular name came from. And once again, like everything I do, any research I find, I will put in the description down below. But it's possible that the stevedore knot was actually named after the stevedore who was the dockyard worker of his day. Or maybe they're still called that now, I don't know. If you are a stevedore, tell me. Uh, or, alternatively, there was a pamphlet once produced, and I'll find out more information on that, where their actual rope was called the stevedore. So it could have been named after the dockyard worker or the actual brand of rope. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on and let's get knotting. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a couple of ways of tying the stevedore knot. And as you can see in front of me, there's my working end, the green end, my standing end going down towards me. What I'm going to do is just pull a little bit round so I've got a, a little bit of cordage for my working end on this side. And you can see now what we've done is we've formed a bite at the top of my rope like so. The next thing I'm going to do is take the working end and I'm going to pass it underneath the standing end and just form a loop at that point. Then I'm going to take the working end and I'm going to pass it over my standing end. There we go. And so I formed an elbow there and then bring it underneath my standing end. So it's coming out on the right hand side. And then once again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my standing end. And then this time, rather than go round again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up at the back of this loop that we've created here originally, just bring it up round the back and then we can start pulling it through. And you can see here now, what we've done is we have now tied our stevedore knot in the end of our line here. Now I've also done it on the red one here, but you'll see the red one is a little bit bulkier. And in the previous steps where we were wrapping it around our standing end, what I was doing was just putting in an extra turn. All I've done is put an extra turn in around it so that we end up with a slightly bulkier knot here. So you can see there's three turns initially here and there's only two turns on the one we did. Right, so let's show you now another way of tying the stevedore knot. Okay, so the next method of tying the stevedore knot, which is probably slightly quicker, is that as you can see in front of me, I have got my the end of my rope and I've formed a bite in my rope and my working end is at the bottom there. And the next thing I'm going to do is just get hold of my rope and put a twist in. So just twist, then twist again, and then twist again. And now what I do is the working end at the top here, I'm going to bring it down and then pass it underneath the loop that we've created in our right hand there, pass it up through, pull it up, and you can see now here that the stevedore knot has started to form in our loop. And there we go, we've put in the stevedore knot. So that's the second way of tying it. So what we're gonna do this time is gonna make a slightly bulkier one, and I'll show you the tabletop method, but you can use the twisted method as well that I showed previously. But as you can see here, there is my cordage in front of me, and what I'm going to do is take a little bit more of a bite at the top. Left hand side is my working end. Right hand side is my standing end. And the next thing I'm going to do is just pass my working end underneath my standing end. So pass it underneath, then pass it over the top. 
then pass it underneath again and then pass it over the top. Now on this one, at this point here, is the standard stevedore knot and where we would now take this working end and pass it up through the back of our loop that we've created just at that point there. But what I'm going to do is just give it one more turn, so take it underneath one more time, take it over one more time and then this time pass it this time, yeah, this time, if I bring it into camera, this time pass it up through the loop. And you can see there now, as I pass it up through the loop, now what I'm going to do is just gently tighten up on that, pull on both ends, and gradually our expanded stevedore knot will start to form. Just dress it up so it looks nice and smart, and then pull it up smart, and you can see now we've got a stevedore knot here with the extra turning around at that point. You can see it's passing over three, whereas on the previous one, it only passed over two. And you can expand on that if you want to and make it more. If you want a bigger, uh, well, it's going to be a longer knot rather than a bulkier knot. I think, to be honest, just two turns is quick and simple enough. So anyway, there we have it. That is the stevedore knot. So once again, thanks all for watching. And if you want to watch more, click on one of these links that appear on the screen and you'll be shown something else. Take care then. Bye-bye. See you again next time.